Well, hi again, everybody. This is uh, Daniel Donnelly with iMetaWrestler.com, and I'm joined with a guy that uh, was one of my favorites growing up. Uh, you know, real big hero of mine. And if you're watching in the 80s and the 90s, Brutus the Bob Beefcake Man. He was one of those names that uh, we never forgot. You know, and he was a big part of uh, a lot of childhoods out there. And we're all going to get the chance to meet him uh, coming up this January through the 27th to the 29th at the Wrestle Reunion event uh, taking place at the LAX Weston. Uh, it's going to be in Los Angeles. It's going to be a great weekend. And Brutus is going to be there. Brutus, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, man. Awesome. Great to be here. Fantastic. And uh, so, yeah, Wrestle Reunion coming up. We're less than uh, two weeks away. Going to be in front of the fans and shaking hands, taking pictures. You like these events? Are these a good time for you? I love these events. I, I do, uh, you know, a lot of uh, the major events, a lot of the uh, horror events, the chiller uh, uh, is a regular, has two events a year. I do their events. Uh, there's a lot of legends events. Um, this particular event, uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, my old partner, we were former world tag team uh, champions, is going to be there. We're going to be signing and, and meeting the fans. It's just something we like to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, a lot of the other guys that we've spoken to, they say that... Uh, it's also kind of like a reunion for you guys, you know, school reunion. You get to see a bunch of old friends, old tag team partners, and uh, catch up with uh, all the old guys again. No, well, absolutely. Um, this, you know, guys are dropping you know, pretty fast these days. Um, you never know when uh, when somebody else is going to, you know, be departing um, yeah. these yeah. days. So you like mm -hmm. to uh, take advantage of uh, situations, and uh, when you get the chance to see old friends and and friends we worked with for years and years mm -hmm. went up and down the road when you get a chance to get together it's uh, it's a great it's a great day yeah yeah absolutely and it's funny you say that because i remember i think it was about uh, about a year and a half ago we were at the um the nwa legends fan fest down in charlotte i, I don't know if you remember you were with um the the team art guys with uh, rick martell and um i yeah. remember seeing you and uh, rick down at the bar and uh, you look like you're having a great time you know you had a couple of beers in your hand and uh telling stories and you just look like you're really enjoying it so i, I can totally understand well uh, absolutely yeah 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 now you do and that was actually another question i was going to ask but um you know you talked about the guys are starting to you know pass away unfortunately and the you know the lifestyle kind of catching up with some guys and one of the things that struck me um about you at the at the other fan fest was you look like you're still in tremendous shape you know you're like still got all that size and you still look like you did in your prime. I mean, what's the secret there? You still hitting the weight? Still, uh, still dieting hard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I started working out nearly forty years ago. Uh, man, with a Hulkster down in Florida mm -hmm. when I was a teenager, and um, you know, Hulk and I've been training together throughout all these years. A lot of times we're not in the same town or whatever, but we still uh, stay in contact basically on a daily basis. And, mm -hmm. You know, we work out together whenever we are together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, those, the, that discipline of, of steel, you might call it, uh, <laughs> just, you know, we, we always made it to the gym. You know, we put the gym first before going to the bar, before going out, before chasing girls, before any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. We always put, you know, that, you know, t that time in the gym, we put that first, you know, and then yeah. we took care of ourselves. You know, and that's and it's still it's still the way I, I feel about today. You know, I try to get to the gym every day and every morning. You know, and to make that effort, and uh, you know, and it just pays off. You know, there's so many friends of who you know didn't really put that much uh, emphasis on taking care of their health. Mm -hmm. You know, and then had, things have caught up to them. You know, down the road, and, and mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there's so much you know ailments going around with the Hep C and this and that, oh. and cancer and leukemias, and I mean, it's just uh, the, the list is as longer than your arm of. of the ailments that people are, can come down with, I'm just you know thank, thankful to to God that he's you know that even though I've had some rough times with it, with a horrible accident I had back in 1990, I was able to recover and and, and make a comeback and uh, and stay healthy and then all this time all these years afterwards and and still you know still very healthy and uh, still got you know a lot of years left in me not not necessarily worried about the wrestling ring, but I still like to do events, a lot of fundraisers and charity events to, 
to help out the uh, children's and, and, and the cancer foundations and the wish kids and all those and mm -hmm. and, the, and the uh law enforcement and, and all and, and try to raise money and help out people in the community yeah that, that, that's wonderful and that's uh that's a special thing to give back to the community like that and again that's something not a lot of guys do you know so that's something that's uh you can be real proud of and a lot of the fans don't hear about those things either you know sometimes they think you know you know the wrestlers they they retire to the beach and you know they've you know all about themselves or whatever but you know you're out there doing all that community stuff and the charities and uh and that's wonderful that's real important for people to hear i think well it's it's you know i've always we've always done it hope, hope has been a, one of the major guys who's, throughout the years has always done it mm -hmm. and and we feel, always feel that by giving that's how you get you know the more you give the more you get back, you know, that's yeah. it kind of been our attitude, and it's always been, it's always worked for us, I can, you know, guys are, like us have been traveling the world for 35 years, my wrestling career span going on 36 years, we've traveled the world, mm -hmm. met, you know, all kinds of people from kings and queens to yeah. presidents, and, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, you know, we're, we're survivors, and, mm -hmm. you know, we're still running around in the world today, you know, making, making money, making friends, Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know and uh, and you know talking to the kids out there in the world, trying to keep them away from drugs and keep them in school and mm -hmm. and things like that. And, you know, and it's uh, it's an honor, it's a privilege to be able to uh, to have that kind of effect and have people look to you for you know uh, as a role model and, and be able to project a kind of positive role model. You know, in the crazy world we are, we have out there today. Oh yeah, I think it's more important than ever these days, you know, and, and, and that character as well, the barber, you know, that's something that people have never forgotten either. I mean, a lot of those names from the 80s, you know, the, the Superfly and Jake the Snake and those kind of guys, I mean, wh why do you think that, uh, you know, the fans have really, like, stuck with you guys, like, that generation and, you know, especially the barber and the, we all remember, you know, the cutting the hair and the, the crazy outfits and, you know, I don't know if we'll necessarily be going to these events 30 years from now and you know meeting the guys of today i don't know maybe we will maybe we won't but why do you think we're so drawn to you guys from from that era well it, it, it was a different it was a great time the wrestling business was going through a lot of changes and, and uh, the media and, and television was making the great advances and and wrestling actually was able to run out to the to the world through cable television and pay-per-views and things and we were in that book of guys and, and we came up uh we all came up as second gen a lot of second generation wrestlers who were mentored by the by the older and, and uh by the older wrestlers and, and by all the top guys and and it was that mentoring and all that knowledge that was being passed down from from them to you know to the next generation which was us and that I, I think it made just a huge difference in the way and, and, and that psychology was learned in the business. There's a lot to to our business. It's a it's a real art form. It's not mm -hmm. nearly. I mean, there's a lot of athleticism involved, but it, it was it's more of an art form than anything. And that and that people had a lot of pride in, in, in their and their business, and, and you know they protected our, our business, and they you know they. And they had a lot of pride in what we did. Mm -hmm. and guys, you know, and the guys protected each other, and they looked out for each other like brothers. Mm -hmm. And and it was it was a different time. It, it, the world has changed, and it's the nature of the beast. Things do change. You know, unfortunately, you can't certain things you you like to stay the same. They they can't. You know, and that we kind of lost sight of a lot of those qualities of you know. Uh, taking care of each other and looking out for each other and, and the pride and protecting the business and, and things, you know, and it's become big business now and entertainment and then and, and, and there was a lot of things lost. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when that knowledge that used to be passed down from, from wrestler to wrestler now is actually how to wrestle in, in wrestling schools and they're, you know, it's more of a, it's like an assembly line, you know, they're, they're turning out wrestlers like rubber stamped out of, out of a mold. And that's yeah. not how, that's not how we were all made, you know, and it made, it just made that difference. People had their own personalities, guys were able to differentiate, you know, and, and everybody was their own person and they weren't, they weren't scripts handed out before mm -hmm. the show and people were told what to say and told what to do and told how to wrestle and told how to talk and told how to walk and told what they're supposed to look like and told how to comb their hair. Mm -hmm. It was none of that. You know, everybody was an individual. Everybody was was using them and, and drawing on their own their personal skills and their knowledge. 
making genuine, you know, everything was genuine out there. And, and, and people can see through, the, you know, these guys now, and they mm-hmm. nothing against them, but it's, it's not their fault. They're just... They just happen to have come along, and, and that's the way it is now. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, think it's like, um, you know, things like the, the territories going away and, and that kind of thing, that, you know, Vince and the WWE, they have, like, their own FCW that kind of feeds them guys, and do you think it's because that's changed, that there's nowhere to learn anymore and nowhere to grow, and, you know, you just you make it to WWE, you, you pretty much have one shot, and if you, you mess it up, you, you're gone, you know? Um, well, that, that's that bit in a nutshell, brother. When the territories went up, way the areas that the, the, the territories were the training camps mm-hmm. where you know all over the country all these different diversified t- training you know techniques and guys travel from territory to territory to territory to learn each and all these different techniques and all these different people and everything and that's what mixing all that together which made great wrestlers and now they don't have that they only there's only one show you know, Vince killed off all the competition, mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. and, and that's her too. You know, without competition, no business will thrive. Yeah. You know, having a having a, a monopoly on the business has never been good for any business ever. No. It's always caused a downfall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, th- th- that's true. Do you think that's something that's motivated Hulk, going back to TNA to try and get something off the ground and challenge Vince a little more? Well, he was trying to help, help them, and I mean, I, in my opinion, I, I just... They they seem to want to to make a difference at first, but mm-hmm. then it just seems like they 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 just didn't want to win, you know. And Hulk wanted Hulk's a guy who wants to make a difference and wanted to win, you know. And when he once he realized that they just didn't want to win, all they just wanted to do was, you know, make a a dent, you know, and then have a little have a little you know piece of a little corner of the of the market and be half satisfied with that, you know, so he just, you know, he's just kind of had to say, okay, you know, if that's what you want, well, you know, then that's, that's what you're going to get. But, you know, it, it's, it's just a shame that, uh, yeah. that they, you know, not really any, any real competition out there for, for events and, and, you know, and the business is suffering. It's, it's really bad everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. You think Hulk's going to stick around there or you think he's going to call it a day soon or what, what do you yeah, think? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't look good, but who, who knows? I, I wish him the best, you know, and he, you know, he's just uh, trying to make his way after the divorce and all that yeah. horrific stuff that happened to him, you know, so he's, uh, he's just like everybody else out there and, you know, and this, this economy is terrible. Everybody's just mm-hmm. trying to survive and make a living for their families and, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. move on. Yeah, no, f- f- I'm with you on that, definitely. But, you know, w- w- just quick, one of the cool things that you guys have, have had lately, if people aren't aware, is um, the the Hulk and Friends tour. And you guys are kind of going around to, you know, different places all over the world. I think you were in Australia recently as well. And, and it's a chance where, kind of similar to this Wrestle Reunion event, you know, you guys sit there and you tell stories of the old days and jokes and the fans can interact with you guys and... Is that something that you see as a, an opportunity? I mean, it, you don't have to physically get in the ring and take bumps anymore. I mean, the fans are just happy to come out and they want to just you know speak with you and you know kind of hang out with you a little. And is that something we might see more of? I'm hoping we, we've had great success with them. I'm actually flying out to El Paso, Texas mm-hmm. tomorrow to do one of those oh, wow. uh, Hulk and fans with Hulk and some of the guys. And um, yeah, I mean the people who have spoke we've spoken to or attended these events. Mm-hmm. In most cases, they've always been um, very responsive, and they've always uh, actually said they've enjoyed them a great deal more than they have any of the the, the, the new wrestling shows, like the you know the the events uh, it, it, the shows they've been to, where there's a lot of just talking but not wrestling, and just stuff that just didn't didn't, didn't excite the people and everything. They get to hear uh, real life stories. Mm-hmm. from the wrestlers themselves that, that no one's ever heard before and you know and, mm-hmm. and then you get to interact with the guys and the wrestlers and and, and get autographs and pictures and, and the whole thing up close which they never really could in any of those venues in the, in the past so mm-hmm. it's it's a treat for them yeah. and uh, everybody so far has been very uh very happy and Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm hoping we can keep doing these for many years to come. Awesome. Well, hey, I hope you come around my area, Bruce, because I'd love to be at one of those things. So, is so he going to be in El Paso <laughs> for tomorrow? That's right. Uh, yeah, well, tomorrow night in El Paso. Yeah. There we go, friend. If anyone's listening, then yeah, get out there for it. Um, and then you know, I guess one other question that you know, I'm sure people are probably hoping that I would ask, but um, you know, you always seem like a real positive person, and you just talked about you know your 
your faith and giving back to the community and you know being a good guy and you know and the same with Hulk he's trying to pick himself up and get on with life and how did it feel when Linda came forward with all these allegations and all these you know this pettiness and trying to bring you guys down and um, I mean did that hurt you at all to, to see that stuff well you know it, uh, it, it's really sad just you know we were, you know I've known Linda a long time and, and it's really sad you know I'm not a hater Hulk is not a hater he just hate his ex-wife mm -hmm. you know he, he has two children he doesn't want to see wish bad of anybody he wants to move on with his life and then and, and, uh, for her to come forward with these ridiculous allegations you know she made allegations that he had beat her up and things like that I mean mm -hmm. and after several years of you know uh, and, and the divorce and all the tra all the trials and transcripts that were done and there was never a mention of anything there's never been a phone call for the police there ever been a report of a bruise or a or anything for her to come forward now and say he abused her and then and then to come forward and say he was a homo and that with his best friend Brutus who he grew up with <laughs> and starting the business with is his homo buddy is, is so ridiculous for anybody to know that's no that's so ridiculous that it's, it's, it's not even it's, it's not even yeah. remotely believable and and yeah. it's just it's, it's so um it's such a shame that she got to stoop she got money you know she should just go away and mm -hmm. and, and uh, i think she's trying to get five more minutes of fame i guess yeah and uh, as because her only claim to fame was uh and she's yeah there it went it, j it just dropped out yeah it just went not a problem not a problem yeah um, so yeah, I think I think we were just talking about Linda, and you said that was pretty much her only claim to fame was was Hulk, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's uh, that's definitely is her only claim to fame, and yeah. you know, now uh, it's just you know she's realizing that, and I guess she's panicking and yeah. trying to do whatever she can. But it's uh, you know when you try to hurt other people and families, you know, I got Hulk's uh, family cousins. You know, uh, it, my I have brothers and sisters and and, and, and nieces and nephews. Are a real large family, and they got to go and, and and read about this and, and hear about it on the radio and the tabloids and you know their friends and school and everything. And mm. it's just hurtful, and, and you know, and, and things like that. When you do things like that to people, you know, it, it just it's going to come back on you. You yeah. know, and it's and and, and it's, it's just a shame because there's no reason for it. No. Other than somebody trying, trying to be hurtful, to hurt my family, to hurt, hurt me, to hurt, reach out and hurt Hulk, and you know, and it's, and at the end of the day, she's only hurting herself. You know, Hulk has filed a lawsuit, um, you know, for defamation and and, and he has and some other some other things, and you know, and I'm preparing to uh, to file a suit uh, also with a yeah. with the same law firm, and they're going to handle me, and I mean. Mm -hmm. We have a very really good case, and she's she's really screwed up. Nobody's we tried to bother her, or to mm -hmm. do anything to her, and now she she's trying to be hurtful and mm -hmm. and uh, and, and help keep us and keep us from making a living mm -hmm. and and her our families. And now she's gonna it's gonna come back on her in yeah. a big way, and it's just a shame it's come down to that. Nobody ever was looking for anything like that to happen, but yeah. you know that's that's that. Now when you look for trouble, you're gonna find it. Yeah, that, that's the road she's taking you guys down. Well, you know, I hope you get that resolved, you know, and I think we all, even as fans, we kind of hope that after the divorce, you know, that it was all going to move on and it all disappears. So it's a shame that it's dragging out, but hopefully you guys can get that resolved pretty quickly and, and we wish you the best. Well, you know, what? yeah, no, I definitely don't want to end it on a bad note, Bruises. So, you know, just again, to uh, just to touch on Wrestle Reunion again, it's going to be the 27th to the 29th in uh, Los Angeles. Um... It's also a Hall of Fame season for WWE as well. Would you like to go in there someday? You think we'll ever see you? Uh, I, I hope so. Um, I don't know, but I'm not really sure why Vince has not done it. Or mm -hmm. uh, you know, they they called me for uh, different things to be on the internet uh, for their WrestleManias. They put me in their magazines, and I, I'm not really sure what mm -hmm. what problems may may be between us. But uh, you know, he's always taken back to everybody else who's really. Mm -hmm. Done some dastardly things to him, and I can't for the life of me understand why he wouldn't. Uh, wow. He wouldn't want to put me in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You know, my partner Greg's in there, and Hulk, and a lot of the guys I was with it, you know, back in those days. And yeah. So I just try to stay positive, and you know, think that uh, sooner or later, uh, you know, with the fans out there, I just tell the fans, hey, you know, write, uh, 
send emails and, and write to the WWE and tell and demand that Vince McMahon do the right thing here and uh, mm-hmm. we'll do this in the Hall of Fame and, and they'll listen. They'll that- fans speak, they'll listen. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a good message for everybody if you want to see Bruises in there. And you know, there's a lot of guys from that era that belong. You know, like you know, Jake and uh, Rick Rude and uh, even the Macho Man. You know, and uh, yeah, that's nev- exactly right, brother. Yeah, never. We never got to exactly. see. Him. We all kind of got robbed of that speech. You know, I think we all were looking forward to seeing him come back and make that speech on the stage. And uh, what are your memories of the Macho Man, Bruises? You were, uh, I bet that was a pretty big shock when you heard about him passing away last year. Yeah, because, you know, Greg Valentine lives right down the street from where he, he crashed into that tree. Mm. Literally, we just, I used to live right in that area, too. I remember I drove, I used to drive by that church where it crashed into the tree every single day. You know, and it's, it's just a, it's a tragedy. You know, Macho Man and I were friends for many, many years. I wrestled him hundreds of times. I t- tremendous, great matches, pay-per-view yeah. matches, you know, and, and um, you know, and we spent a lot of time in the gym together. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I, and Hulk all, all together in the gym, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's a shame that it had to end that way for him. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we miss him, and, you know, you know we know that, um, you know, at least he's moved on to a better place. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Bruce, you know, we appreciate your time today, and you know, obviously you're keeping busy. We're going to see you at that Wrestle Reunion event. you got Hulk and Friends in uh, El Paso tomorrow. Um, and then, you know, you seem to pop up in all different places. The celebrity wrestling with, with Hulk on the CMT and, uh, you know, the, the, the little boxing program that you did. So I guess we'll never know when we'll see you in the future. But uh, you sound like a yeah, real busy man, real positive, and that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah everybody keep an eye out there because, you know, uh, it's not over yet. We have some... Uh some other Valley TV stuff in the wind, you know, cooking that we're working on and some other some other projects, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Still cutting and strutting, huh? Still cutting and strutting, man. <laughs> well, Brutus, we appreciate your time today, man, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the end of the month in, uh, in Los Angeles. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks.